Hey, social media, Mike here with my boy Charles. Charles, say what's up. What's up? Man, welcome to 2020, and what an honor it is for us for our first podcast on 2020. We got gentleman Nick Perry with us who's going to share how to hire a right. Right, Nick? Let's do it, man. Yeah, thank you guys for having me on. Appreciate it. No, man, it's our yeah, honor. Yeah. It's our honor, man, right? Hell yeah. Excited. He's been here for two hours just sharing and sharing. Yeah, a lot of knowledge passed in the last uh, hour, an hour and a half or so on behind the scenes of what he's doing in Austin and how he's doing virtual wholesaling. We're going to talk about how to hire right, and Nick is going to drop, drop off massive value. So stay tuned, guys. All right, guys, we're back. So, again, my name is Michael Giannis. This is my boy, Charles Hernandez, and our special guest in the middle is Nick Perry. Nick Perry is what I would call a big dog uh, in the wholesaling industry, even in the real estate industry in general, and he's going to drop off massive value. Ain't that right, Nick? Absolutely. Let's get it. All right, guys, so I think in the past uh, few months or so, we've had a, a huge following. we got some uh, new members part of the association, a new members part of the uh, Home Bottom Sun Solutions. So I just want to do a quick recap for those guys who are watching for the first time. Again, my name is Mike. That's my boy Charles. We own and operate Home Buy and Home Center Solutions, and we have a group called Home Buy and Home Center Association on Facebook. If you guys have any request membership, you definitely want to. So we share our tips and tricks on everything we do, such as Charles, such as everything from wholesaling, subject tos, portfolio properties, multifamily, creative financing. Yeah, pretty much do it all. Everything, right? Yeah, we try to. <laughs> we try to do a little bit of everything. Man, we do virtual wholesaling. We do. A, Sub twos. We are in the San Antonio market, but we're doing deals in El Paso, uh, Corpus, Virginia, Laredo, and even those small towns that's in between, man. If we can make something happen, yeah. we'll make something happen because every dollar counts, right? Every dollar counts, man. All right. So, again, we got Nick, man. So, Nick, <clears throat> we first met at Wholescaling. Wholescaling Live, that's yeah. That's where we met, man. Houston. And when you're on stage uh, with your with your boy, man, you guys drop value. And uh, I think the best beneficial factor for us was with our – our manager here, Frank Tovar, really implemented a lot of the tools that you provided at Wholescaling. So if you guys missed that at Wholescaling, for sure, massive value, man. That that management piece, how to hire, put a big change in our in our routine. It didn't trust. Yeah. Yeah. And we learned how to hire right, man, based off your, your Wholescaling event. Yeah, I mean, that's the biggest thing. If you don't have good people, you have nothing. Like, you guys are sitting here edifying me, like, as a big dog, but it's my people that make me look good, right? So if you don't have good people... You don't have a good company. You're only as good as your your players. So, a uh, team with the best players wins, like you know Jack yeah. Welch says. So, well, you know, um, <clears throat> to add to that, you know, when we did meet over there, I also want to thank you because, you know, man, you were very giving, man. You were talking to everybody, just answering everybody's questions, and uh, and for us, we take we we took that away, man. Like, man, this guy's that's yeah, really awesome. You know, not a lot of people want to share. You know. But it's an abundance mindset, right? So, That's for sure. you know, just give, and, and the universe has got a way of, of giving back. So I got a little bit of a, an agenda here. Charles is not too fan of my agenda. I like to keep stuff on script. Here. Charles likes to just ramble on, but that's what we do. So we'll kind of stick to the agenda for you. For those who don't know you, Nick, uh, for those who, for some reason, uh, is hearing you for the first time, let's talk a little bit about you, and then we'll get into how to hire and, and your, your past, present, and future, and, and what you really dropped off on indeed. So uh, how did you get into real estate, man? I yeah, grew up in uh, right outside of Washington, D.C., and uh, you know, was a personal trainer, kind of hit a dead end with that, working 60 hours a week, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, I really wanted to make a, a better future for myself. Didn't see a lot of opportunity for myself in Northern Virginia. Uh, it's a heavy federal government. My family's on the federal government, but that wasn't really the route I wanted to take. I wanted to be an entrepreneur. So, uh, you know, I had seven grand saved up called an apartment locator at the end of my lease and said, hey, I want to move down to Austin, Texas. Give me as close to downtown as you can for a thousand bucks a month. So, why, why Austin? Yeah, good food, um, 
good economy, good weather, good looking girls. So put me <laughs> put me in Austin. So there it is. Yeah, I packed everything in my uh, my little Mazda three, drove down into an empty apartment, and uh, it was kind of like an open chapter at that time. I had a lot of self reflection, you know, on the twenty four hour drive down on what I wanted yeah. to do with my life, and uh, you know, started uh, watching YouTube videos, picked up Sean Terry, uh, a lot of the other you know guys that early that were teaching wholesaling. What year was this? 2014. So not that long ago, man. Yeah, it's not that long ago. 2014 was. Well, you guys are OG, so uh, I mean you're vets. Charles, 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 no, you guys but, are vets. But so. we were talking about this. Yeah, we've been in it for a while, but we actually didn't wake up to what you discovered in 2014. Right. We didn't wake up into it to like 2000 what 18, Mike? Yeah, pretty much for the most part. Yeah. Yeah. But 2014, so so you had an epiphany. It's like, hey, let me go down to Austin, and we came to Austin. How? Did I miss on um, why real estate or how real estate? Were you doing real estate before Austin? No, no, I was a personal trainer. I had done That's some right. sales. Okay, yeah, I did personal training, and then my last job before I left, I was doing franchise sales, um, and so I was really capped out on like where you know where I was going in my life. So, need some fresh opportunity, and um, <clears throat> when I came down to Austin, it was just kind of like you know I knew I I wanted to be my own boss. I wanted to own a company, and um, I, real estate was it was like either real estate. Uh, I come up with some brilliant app idea uh -huh. or like, you know, oil, like where are people making money? I was like, oil. I, I probably got the the best shot at real estate. So I dove head first into that. And he said you followed uh, Sean Terry? You just kind of Googled him, YouTubed him, and he popped up? YouTubed him, and then I put myself through YouTube University, you know, watched hundreds and hundreds of hours of uh, YouTube content, dug in and took action, was spending all the money I didn't have to put out bandit signs, handwrite letters. And uh, didn't get my first deal for 11 months. It was a pretty tough road. It's not, so 11 months, man, we have uh, one of our guys here. You know, he's probably one of the top producers here. He goes off by the name of Manny Cash. Manny didn't get his first deal until eight months. And there's people who didn't get the deal for months, and that's just normal. But then we have someone in our team like Carlos on his first day having to get his first deal. And it was a pretty good payday, right? Yeah. So we're in Austin. We're in 2014. You're looking up Sean Terry YouTube videos and, and everything else. How did wholesaling come in? What was your first? How was your first wholesale deal like? Uh, first wholesale deal, uh, I was actually I had to get a job because it's either that or I'm getting evicted and I'm living in my car. That that wasn't yeah, happening. Yeah, so yeah, I had a job. I was still I had a nine to five, and then I had a six to two. So nine to five at my full time job, then six p.m. to two a.m. in the morning doing real estate, and then all my weekends. So I had a call come in while I was at work. I took it. Probably shouldn't have taken it, but it got me my first deal. It was an appointment I'd been on three months prior, and they were like, hey, you know, we're ready to go. The house has been through probate, and uh, we'd like to move forward with your offer. So it was a piece of crap, tear down property in the middle of nowhere, Smithville, Texas. Smithville, Texas. Smithville, I'm from Texas, Texas man. Now, Smithville, Texas. Where was that at? Uh, in between uh, Austin and Houston. So it's like an hour outside of Austin. Mm -hmm. But uh, we got it at a smoking discount. I think I got it for 18000 It was worth like 100 and uh, I sold it for 30, so we made 13 on the first 13, deal. 13 yep. on the first deal? Yep. You know, two things I'm hearing right now is, one, you took action, you didn't wait around for some guru, you went at it, man, and, uh, and that's what a lot of people don't do, man. They just don't take action. You know, They don't put the time into learning, like you said, YouTube University. If somebody really wants to do this, they can get online and learn the business, and then they gotta take action. Especially now, yeah. right in 2020, there's way better content than there was way five content, years ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah of course. And, and then you got events like wholesaling, where you were one of the speakers on there. And yeah, I mean, it just nothing new. That was live stream or something along those lines, where you can buy the yeah. tickets at a, and, at a and decent price. So, so we meet a lot of people, you know, and they're like, "Man, I don't know, I don't have time." But just listening to you, it's exactly like us. Like you know, you know, you're working, then you're hitting it on weekends to make it happen. Do whatever it takes. Do whatever it takes, I like that one. So we've been chit-chatting uh, behind the scenes before the podcast started, uh, so I know where you're at now, but from 2014, your first probate deal, you said you had a nine to five, what was the nine to five? Uh, I was working at Indeed.com, so, Indeed. yep, selling pay-per-click advertising, calling big companies, trying to get them to spend money on ads. And I, because I wanted out of that job so bad, so I could be full-time in, in real estate, I crushed it at that position I did really well and made you know decent commissions there right um, and I would take all those commissions and shovel it right back into my real estate business and so that kind of okay, catapulted nice. me you know to get out with your time and indeed you incorporated that now isn't it? I mean, it's paid dividends and then you're, yeah uh, you're still implementing ideas or 
uh, tips and tricks from Indeed to your current business and uh, hiring people now? Well, Indeed's like really where I got my sales chops. They run a world-class sales organization. It's you know, 60 calls a day, 120 minutes. You're banging the phones nonstop. So that your know, repetition and that muscle hitting you know high quotas to high intensity sales environment that really groomed me to to be who I am today, and it also um, gave me some inside uh, knowledge into recruiting, hiring, getting your know, qualified candidates, which has obviously served us well. You know, at, you know, earning a business where we right. need to hire and retain top talent. So 2012 first probate deal. When do we quit? Indeed. It took me until 2017. So the reason it took so long is, you know, to, I had you know enough money saved up. I was going to quit. I got common law. I didn't know that was a thing here in Texas. Mm. Yeah. So I lost everything I had within the course of like six weeks. It'll happen, man. Yeah. I was like, you know, going to break up with a girl. Got served divorce papers. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> lost everything in six weeks. Bounced back. But it took me another you know, six to eight months to really bounce back. Yeah. So I had to uh, reset myself, and then I went ahead and exited my corporate position. Are you position. capable about that now? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> I don't mess around. It. No. Yeah. Okay, so you're doing that, and then, um, so that's kind of how you got started from moving from, what was it, Washington? Yeah, Washington, Northern Virginia. Northern Virginia to here, mm-hmm. and then you got the band signs and the probate deal. So now you got, indeed, because I think uh, a lot of people take a lot of value from what you shared at wholescaling and what you share now and what you're willing to share today to everyone who's watching. Uh, which we got a pretty decent size people watching, so I'm sure you guys are going to take value. He's going to talk in a little bit about how to hire right if you guys want to scale your business. Uh, here at Home Item Sun Solutions, we actually implemented some of his uh, ideas. So before we get into how to hire, what are we looking at today? What's the day-to-day operations now? Because I know we chatted behind the scenes, but for everyone who kind of has a don't know your your full role today, the present, what do you, what do you got going on today, virtual seven? Yeah, so we're nationwide, so we run – you know, digital advertising all across the United States. We're doing everything from our office in uh, Austin, Texas. And so it doesn't matter if it's in, you know, Washington, Florida, Maine, Arizona, we'll, we'll take it down. I mean, the comps are good enough nowadays that you can put something under contract and know what it's worth with tools like PropStream and Zillow Solds. You know, you know, yeah, you know what, you know what it's worth. So you don't physically have to go to these houses anymore, which makes it you know accessible to not be geographically limited. So or, you know, we're we're just in the office all day talking to people in all different parts of the country, negotiating deep discounts on their house. Are you doing a uh, uh, Google right? You said PPC. Yeah, Google, Bing, Facebook, Instagram. So that's a huge niche that a lot of people, in my opinion, are not doing. I think the most common groups or the most common teams or most common solo premiers, if you guys are doing this by yourself. We pull a list, right? You do the data, and then we're doing, reaching out to them, a lot of cold calling. But you're doing it the other way around when it's more inbound, so it's a lot e- well, not easier, because I'm sure it has its own hectics and its own tactics and measures that you're doing on your end, uh, because you're you're about more fam- familiar with it. Uh, but you said you use PropStream? Yeah, we did. So we stopped, we're doing 100% digital advertising now, because, you know, in 2019, 80% of our revenue uh-huh. uh, was coming from digital online leads, but you know, 60% of my marketing spend was in RVM, SMS, you know, direct mail, those other source mediums. So I said, well, this doesn't make sense. Let's go ahead and put 100% of the budget into uh, digital advertising. It's 2020. Where does everybody go if they have a problem? Right to their phone, right? Right, right online. So we did that, and, you know, business has been booming. So That's good, man. I mean, Charles, you want to kind of share a little bit about the headaches we had with PPC? I just I told you earlier. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, uh, I mean, I understand the concepts of PVC, but I can't do it like you do, of course, right? And it's great that you know how to do it. But man, we've had quite a few gurus come through here and talk a big game. And last year we got took really we took it on the chin for ten thousand bucks. This guy came in here, talked a big game, had a good following, and uh, man, we didn't get one deal, man. Nothing. Yeah, yeah, I know. I mean, anytime, even in the, like the early days, like you'd know, be like, "Hey, you know, my mentors be like, why don't you outsource that?" There's people that are better. Than, every time I'd outsource it, it was always a nightmare. So, you know, I took it upon myself to become an expert in that subject matter. I'm constantly reading articles, what's happening, what's coming out. You know, I, I'm on the phone with Google probably once every couple of weeks, um, and you know, I've just taken the time to learn it. So um, that served served us extremely well to this point you know take the time to learn those tools they're not going away google's not going away 
So for you guys that uh, who don't know Texas too well, or I would say Austin too well, Austin's a very tough market. That's, I mean, Austin's tough. Yeah. From what I hear, to find good deals, um, Austin's tough. And earlier you said you're based out of Austin, but you don't do that many Austin deals, correct? Yeah, no, Austin to us, for it's not a great uh, wholesale market. I mean, it costs you $10,000 to get a deal there, and your assignment fee is probably going to be eleven grand. So I won't disrespect my money that way. Yeah. It makes no sense. I won't disrespect my money that way. That's, yeah. I've never heard of that one before. I like that one Don't too, disrespect man. my money. You need to write um, that one down. Yeah, write that one down, man. So paper click that. I think you're. I think you're doing fire on that. If you don't mind me asking a few more questions, such as how many contracts are we doing a month, or how many deals are we doing a month? I mean, we'll lock up like 40 contracts, and then we'll close 25 to 30 of them. Sense. There's 10 or 15 that fall out I for whatever know. reason, especially being you know, nationwide and virtual. You miss stuff in pictures and sellers lie. You know, there's all kinds of things you miss. So, yeah, you know, we'll close, you know, six, six, 55 to 65 percent of our contracts that we put in our contracts. Yeah. So, 25 to 30 are actually closed right. and funded. Yeah, I would say that's pretty much average across the board. I think from title issues and whatever the case may be. So, I, for example, when you're closing, like we we started venturing out to different cities and states, right, in the last uh, four months, four or five months. So when you're taking down, for example, or when you first started, because I'm sure you got it down now, when you're taking down a property for the first time, let's just say in Wyoming, mm -hmm. were you doing the due diligence of figuring out how that state works, you know, when it comes to whether, you know, whether it's community state, non-community, judicial, non-judicial, title companies, so. are you figuring all that stuff out no. or you get somebody for you? No, I don't, I don't really get in the weeds with that. I just see a property, if it's worth a hundred grand, and I see what the sold comparables are, we'll lock it up at whatever the appropriate wholesale price is. And then we'll turn around, we'll find our buyers, and we'll get it sold at you know whatever that arbitrage is. So we're not worried about like, is it an attorney state? We do deal with attorney states. Yeah, Illinois, New York, like the list goes on and on. Mm -hmm. And we've just learned to deal with them over time, but it's not like something that like, oh, we got a deal in, um, you know, this new state we've never been in, we got to learn the laws and mm -hmm. you know, print out new contracts. We got one boilerplate contract for every single you know, property nationwide. So you use the same contract for uh, across the board? Across the board, yeah. That's pretty nice. And with all the contracts you have now, how many states are you in? Uh, I mean, I've closed deals, pro I'd have to, probably like 30, 30, 30 states. Different? Yeah, I mean like North Dakota, South Dakota, Wyoming, I've never closed a deal in Wyoming. Mm -hmm. Uh, I will, but you know, a lot of those more rural states, it's a pain in the butt on uh, dispositions yeah, when I you're, bet. yeah. So, uh, not to say I wouldn't take a deal on there if it was a strong enough deal, but we pass on a lot of that stuff. Hmm. So, yep. man, in a quick nutshell, from personal trainer, which I can still, I can tell you're still doing some training. I still try to get yeah. in there, yeah, as much I as tell. I can. No, when you sit next to me in Charles, man, I can tell. Uh, I'm, so try, I'm trying to get in there, man. You're, you're doing that, all right? You're doing virtual wholesaling. You've done deals. So, guys watching, uh, this dude is doing deals. And I think right now, currently, may have, what, 12 states for now? But you've done 30 states of the 50 closing mm -hmm. deals, virtual wholesaling, without seeing the property himself, without meeting his, the seller or the buyer, perhaps, himself personally. So that's a new wave um, I think most people want to get into because virtual wholesaling is – you're making money out of thin air for the most part, using your PPCs and all that good stuff you have, right? Yeah, just uh, you know, marketing and payroll, you know, too big, you know, too basic expenses. No driving or, you know, spending windshield shield time getting out to the houses. Mm. Like so, we we're, we try to be as efficient as we can. Let's uh, do a quick little information right here. Uh, so those who are watching on your screen, you see a little bit of information about us. Again, you can join the Home Buying Home Selling Association on Facebook. It is a group, so you do have to request membership. Uh, so you guys might want to make sure you guys do that so you can get tips, tricks, and knowledge on what we do in real estate investing. We do have a podcast every Wednesday at 6.30. Uh, today we are blessed with Nick Perry. Uh, visit our website, guys, at turnupthehustle.com. Turnupthehustle.com, you're going to find out what systems and tools we use. Uh, you can get great discounts if you're using tools like call tools, uh, prop stream, and all the other good stuff. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And again, uh, join the association. Uh, so let's get back into it, Nick. How many guys are on your team now? Right now we have nine. We got another one starting next week. So, um, you know, we're scaling as smart, right? So it's one perfect brick at a time when you're building building a massive wall. Yeah. You can't scale chaos. So we're very selective on who we bring into the organization, when we bring them in, and, and how we train them. So, um, like, I don't have, like, projected headcount goals. Like, I want to be at, you know, a thousand people. I want one perfect person at a time. So... Have you had um, in the beginning? 
Did you fire a lot of? Did you have a lot of turnover? Yeah, I mean, we never really had anybody quit, but we fired a lot of people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, we we have really high standards, and it's still the same way today. If we, you know, have a mess up on hiring, we'll fire them in the first three days. If they're not good, we'll just say, "Hey, pack your shit." And, you know. do, you, do you mind uh, sharing some of the standards for the a new person? Uh, yeah, I mean, new person, they've got to hit our core values, right? So, you know, whatever it takes, that's one of our core values. Uh, you know, trust and loyalty. You, know, you can't have, you can't have it. You can't be on a mission together. You were in the military. You don't have trust and loyalty with your guys, right? right? Um, you know, we want to make sure that you know these people see the long term vision. They're not just nine to fivers. They need to be all in, mm-hmm. right? Like we're going somewhere together, and we need people that are all in. So, um, it's really the self starter. You know, hungry. Um, salesperson that that thrives in our organization not like some clock puncher okay so we got about a good 40 50 people watching guys if you have questions by all means let's uh let's pick Nick perry's brain on how to hire what he does and how to incorporate indeed.com uh to his current real estate investing business and how he's so successful doing 30 to 50 contracts a month uh doing it in 30 different states um and just doing you know in my opinion and i would would say the same for a lot of people uh, most people's opinions, uh, a big player, man. So we definitely, uh, again, are, are honored that you're here with us, sharing knowledge, sharing value. Is that right, Charles? Yeah, man, a big and very respected player. Man. Thanks, man. You. Well, I mean, I learned just as much from you guys, well, you know, as I do. You right. know, I can tell you right now, your reputation precedes you, man. As a good, as a good guy, we heard about you way before we ever met you, and it was always all good stuff, man. So. You so really let's get back it. into uh, hiring. So we have this little buzzer here. Charles is not a fan of this buzzer, but the buzzer makes this noise. <laughs> it makes this noise. Uh, we do this buzzer whenever that's like, man, cold and night. Man, this dude just dropped a massive bomb. And the goal is to get as many of these out of you so it can go to you guys, so everyone who's watching on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, and then again, whatever questions you guys want to ask uh, this gentleman, for all these goals, go ahead and do so. So, I guess let's get into it on how to hire right now. Wholescaling, when you did that, what was the, the, the giveaway in the end? What was the, hey, make sure everyone understands this. If you guys never pay attention to my, my speaking, I think you spoke for a good hour or so, make sure the takeaway is this. What is that? To never have a problem with hiring again. To never, ever have a problem with hiring again. Right? Yeah. yeah. I think, I think, uh. I mean, you're always gonna have problems in hiring, but yeah. like to n- not that that not be some issue that you see in your business, right? Like it's just a process. It's literally just a process. Well, like Mike said, you know, we've implemented some of your strategies here, and before we, I mean, bless everybody who came through here. I mean, we care about everybody that was here, but before it was just hey, come in, come on. But we really have to. We really had to. Get specific, you know. I got a question here. So it's from Amberly. Amberly is in Virginia. Uh, out of Virginia, she's asking, do you do any personality or disc type test or anything included on, in onboarding? So what about that? The personality test, I know I heard of it. Uh, we don't do it here. I mean, I guess it would be nice on the disc test. Do you do something like that in your? In yeah, your what's up, Amberly? Represent Virginia. Um, yeah, so we do the uh, Tony Robbins disc test, which is great. It's the four personality, you know, everybody does it. But the one that's the most impactful is the Hexaco test, H-E-X-A-C-O. You can Google it. It's a free test. I think it's like hexaco.org. Take it yourself. I, I encourage you to take it yourself so you can see the results for yourself. But what that one's going to tell you is the intangibles on a candidate. Is this person a compulsive liar? Do they have anxiety disorder? Are they going to... Um, you know, be rigid if you give them direction. Are they not going to be flexible to new ideas and new concepts? It's going to give you those intangibles that you need to know before um, bringing somebody on to your organization. Man. Right, we're going to have everybody take that test here. Yeah, everyone, everyone take the test right tomorrow. Hey, can so, you write that man down? You, you Everybody's time, taking that test tomorrow. Can you put in the comment? What was the Hexaco one more time? Hexaco. Let's put that one more time and let's put on the comments. So I think it's H E X A C O. Yeah. Right, so put that in the comments. So we're going to put that as a pinned comment. So if you guys are watching, I believe you asked that question. Uh, we'll put that in a pinned comment so you can see what Tessie's talking about and how he implements it on his team. All right, second question. When you hire people, do you hire them with sales experience or not at all and you train them the right way? No, this is not an entry-level job. The leads in this business are too expensive to be hiring entry-level people and people learning on my dime. 
Like I'm not bringing somebody in green that doesn't know how to manage a pipeline, you know, uh, open a conversation, build rapport, and, and close the deal. You know, so they've got to have some sort of previous sales um, knowledge if they're going to be talking to uh, closing deals on either acquisitions or dispositions. Because that, that was always a common question for a lot of people, even from people here in San Antonio. Hey, what do you guys do? And I would say best of both worlds, but I mean, that makes sense what you're saying, you know, for sure. So when you finally bring someone in, are you put them in as a junior acquisition? Do you let them actually close or, 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 you, or, you, or are they strong enough that you just put them into acquisitions and let them do the whole deal themselves? Yeah, I mean, if it's a killer, we're putting them right on senior acquisitions. And it's sink or swim. Like, we're going to know pretty quick, like, if you're a little bitch and yeah. we're going to cut you. Yeah. <laughs> <So>. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, Charles, what else you got from? I'm just open. I'm, I'm all, I'm all ears, all man. Ears? Okay, so let's get a Frank, question. Frank's taking notes over there, man. All day. Frank's taking notes like we did in the in the whole school, man. So that's good, man. So, uh, what should we specifically look for when hiring for sales job? Something specific, like, hey, man, I don't know. I'm gonna add more to this, and that came. Is from that our, Aaron Gossett? That yeah, is Aaron. Yeah. That Aaron's our acquisition guy. He's just, he's just. We look for guys like Aaron. Aaron came from. Um, his previous role, he um, was, what did he do before? He was in, uh, he yeah, he was in timeshare sales car before. Sales. Car Timeshare sales, and then before that, he was in car sales. So, you know, timeshare sales, that's brutal. It's commission only. Yeah. You're sitting at the West End, like, uh, waiting yeah. to people come in and, and give them a little dog and pony show and try to get them to commit to a timeshare. Man, those people yeah. won't even let you leave the, the place, Right, man. so that that's a perfect example. You know, car sales, uh, timeshare sales. Uh, insurance sales, uh, some sort of heavily commissioned sales background. What has bombed for us is, you know, at first it was like, they just have to have sales experience. Then we'd be hiring these people that, you know, worked at Oracle before or like, you know, some SaaS company and they had some cushy base with like, you know, nice, you know, um, insurance, like the whole nine big package and they just don't make it. They don't have enough hustler mentality to survive in a heavy, you know, commission environment. Right. From now on, everybody 100% commission. <laughs> <laughs> and we pay base and commission, but they need to have that. They need to be battle tested yeah. through some other you know, battle companies. tested. All right, the questions are rolling in now, so I'll, I'll start picking a few more questions. But again, guys, for those who are just tuning in, we have the honor to have Nick Perry with us, who is, in my opinion, again, a big wig who's doing virtual wholesaling, who has done it in 30 of the 50 states. Uh, usually, kind of gets about 30 to 50 contracts a month. We met him through wholesaling. Uh, we're very fond of Nick and, and what he's doing in Austin and what he's doing virtual wholesaling, which is, I would say, what percentage wise is virtual wholesaling your business? About ninety five percent. Is that what you're doing? Or Dude, we, we don't go portfolio? after. But yeah, no, we don't. We don't really do. We are, we are going to be doing portfolio now, but um, that's just because we've we've graduated to the point right. where we're going to start looking at that. Like I'm I'm a firm believer in stay in your lane, master one thing, mm -hmm. and try not to diversify. So. Okay. Like we're we're all in on wholesaling. We're gonna stay all in on wholesaling. But like personally, for you know me as the CEO, I know you know my COO, some of the people in my company. We're gonna start you know implementing you know sub two, you know looking at multifamily okay. this year in you know, 2020. All right, so uh, let's get a few more questions. So another one we have here is from um, Rafael Campos. Rafael, I believe, is out of Corpus. Uh, what amounts of appointment and signed contracts do your acquisition have to produce in a week? So we don't do appointments. Uh, we met. We metric our uh, acquisition guys on uh, contract lead to contract. So lead we expect. Contract. Yep, we expect one in every twenty leads to produce a contract. One out of every twenty leads. Correct. To pull a contract. Correct. So five out of hundred. Correct. It's okay. so about five percent. Yep. Okay. Now these are warm leads coming in, though, right? Yeah, these are PPC leads coming yeah. in. And we measure that on a weekly basis. So we see where every single one of our acquisition reps is. How did they do this week? Yeah, okay, this person was one in 12. This person was one in 18. This person was one in 36. But he did one in seven last week. And we, we measure it throughout the quarter. And obviously, if there's you know, a recurring problem, we fix it. So are you 100% inbound? No outbound flyers, band size, letters? No, no we did letters just to prove that because... We were like, you know what, we need to hop back on the direct mail train. And uh, I think I spent 17 grand last quarter on it and uh, still haven't got a deal from it yet. So, okay. so, yeah. so yeah. any advice on, uh, for those for those who are still, like we do cold calling, SMS and stuff like that. So what advice would you give 
to those in the industry who are using those tactics to, um, for example, like how many deals would you expect per lead for that individual? So if somebody's getting, let's just say, I'm dropping 10,000 leads on two guys just to cold call, how many deals would you expect to get out of there? And so it depends on your, your cold calling. So if, you got, if you've outsourced your cold calling, um, and you're using, it depends on the company you're using. I went around the world on cold callers, Philippines, Mexico, Egypt in 2019. And, um, yeah, I think our best cold calling campaign was one in 38. One in 38. Yeah. And then we had one that was like one in 110 or something. Mm. And then one that was like one in 53. So if that gives you any insight, I think a lot of it comes down to, um, uh, your cold callers. Right, so if you got good cold callers that are passing over warm leads, you're gonna know. I mean, our best one was one in 38 on cold calls. That's funny you say that because today we had a meeting here, myself, Mike, uh, Manny Cash, and Frank, and that's exactly what we're talking about. We're talking about you know, you know about about tracking our VAs in the Philippines and our in-house people. You know, are they actually passing up warm leads? And if they are. Why? You know, what can we do to to uh, to stop that from happening? And, and it's true, man, because you can let a lot of stuff slide. slide. I agree. So I we, agree. Got a, we got a few more questions coming in, so let's see if we can get them all answered for the most part. So our buddy Charles Wynn out of Houston, who's one of the individuals who put the host gun together, so shout What's out up, to Charles. To Charles. Uh, his question is: What percent of candidates pan out versus flake out? What's up, Charles? Um, yeah. So the ones that come in, you know, if they if we actually hire them we've got it down pretty good now where we're we're fairly confident we don't really have a, like a fallout with candidates as mm -hmm. much as we were but we've learned a lot like you know we're going to talk about it here in just a bit on the hiring process there's things that they're going to weed themselves out before we actually bring those candidates and train them and onboard them now it still does happen you know where they get all the way through the process and then they get on the job and we find out that they're not going to be a good fit but right now, I'd say we've got a pretty good track, track record. Um, you know, probably one out of ten, you know, we'll have to tell them, hey, man, it's not going to be a good fit. But um, I, I'd say we're trying to get that even lower. So we're moving in the right direction. So always moving, always uh, improving. Yep. Um, Hernando has a question. Hernando, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save your question for a little later on. But Hernando uh, is part of the Hillco team here in San Antonio. So shout out to Hernando. What's up, Hernando? Uh, Rafael has another question. Is What's your probation period after hiring an acquisition? So we give everybody a 90-day probation period, and we tell them, you know, in the in the initial, you know, onboarding, we say, hey, you're on a 90-day probation period. So what that means is, you know, for any time, uh, you, you don't think it's a good fit or we don't think it's going to fit a good fit, mm -hmm. you know, we're just going to let each other know and part way as friends. So that just takes the pressure out of the whole situation. Yeah. And so yeah. you set the tone from the beginning, man. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Buddy's here. You got that. No, we're all good here, man. Frank does awesome stuff here, man. Uh, so another question we have from our boy Anthony. Uh, Anthony says or asks, have you hired friends and family? Uh, yes, and uh, that didn't work out too good for me. I don't do it. Remember when I said I got common law before? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So mixing the business and the fam it, and not a good move. I mean, I wouldn't do it. Um, I did, yeah. Well, you know what? I hired my sister. She worked for me for two years. It worked out great, but I told her, I said, hey, Alexa, you're my sister, um, but if I fire you, we're still going to be uh, family, so just know that. And if you're not doing well, I am going to fire you. So that's a, that's yeah. a, I mean, so it makes sense, Fam, friends and family. You know, just set those expectations set those up front. Expectations up front. Yeah, uh, it's a little funny, uh, Anthony asking that question because it's if you guys don't know who's watching this podcast, and uh, a lot of people think this, but if you guys don't know, Charles is actually my father-in-law. So Charles, like he said, man, if you don't shape up, I'm gonna fire you. Yeah, yeah but, no, but, but you guys no, set good ground uh, rules. Up no, we set good ground so, rules. You yeah, want to yeah. tell a little bit about the ground rules that we talked uh, about? I think a vacation, man. <laughs> uh, Already did. We sweet. <laughs> <laughs> so when Mike and I first got together, man, we. Uh, you know, I had told him I've been in business before, and I said, "Look, man, partnerships don't work out most of the time. You got to have ground rules, and and these are the four main things that I've seen partnerships break up. One, everything has to go through HPHS. There's no side deals. You know, not in anything that has to do with royalty. Everything comes in, and 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 then we decide what to do with it. Two, we both have a say. 
you know, and, and uh, that was a big thing. And if, for example, if I want to do something, he says, all right, I'm not with it, but go ahead. And then it goes wrong. He can't come back later and say, hey, I told you so. And then the other thing is everything's 50-50. There's no arguing about money. And then, of course, we both live and die by this. We roll the dice. And we win, we win. We lose, we both lose. So that's the four main, the four main uh, I guess, rules or whatever you want to call it that we live by. So I have to, there you go, man. You got to cut a perspective from, from Nick Perry and then a little bit about us. So I, I guess just, and that, of course, comes down to preference. But, of course, you always hear, you know, don't mix uh, family and, and business. But to each own. Uh, Rafi has another question. Do you pay draws when starting out to keep new acquisitions motivated? No, we just pay them salary and commission. I mean, here's the thing. If you bring somebody on and you're paying them a couple thousand bucks a month and they don't work out and you fire them quickly, what are you out, like a thousand bucks? Like, it's not that big of a deal. Like, the whole draw thing, I don't like it. Um, I'd say just go ahead and go, you know, boss up and go commission and uh, and salary. Straight to the point. All right. Uh, another question, can you explain the different job descriptions descriptions on junior acquisitions and senior acquisitions? How does that work? How does the system work? Yeah, so uh, junior acquisitions, we've got such a large database at this point that there's no way for our guys to be sitting there you know, trying to get people on the phone, old leads and things like that. So that's junior acquisitions. They're on a dialer all day long, and they're just trying to get somebody back on the phone that still has interest in selling. And if they get somebody that, that's on the phone and they still want to sell their house, then they sign you'll call our uh, senior acquisition sales floor. One of those guys pick up the phone and they'll go ahead and take that, you know, to, to close. That's cool. Yep. Smooth yeah, transition. The straight buzz is around here, man. Let's keep the count. Anybody keep the count? Uh, Anthony again, who does your PPC? So, I mean, you being, you know, doing what you do in PPC, and I, I personally I don't think I know anyone else does more PPC than you do. How, how would you ask that question? Who does your PPC? Um, I do my PPC. I, you know, like I said earlier in the podcast, like just took, uh, you know, a lot of time and energy to really learn it, and um, you know, learn the ins and outs of it, and spent hundreds of hours in my campaign. So, mm. um, I've learned to do it. Please don't ask me to do PPC management for you because I got <laughs> these guys keep me too busy. So I'm not going to do any PPC management for any investors, but. Uh, yeah, I yeah, just take the time and learn. I was, it. was on the tip of my tongue. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, but I, I know better, man. Yeah. So. Uh, so that question is a good question, man. That's, that's, uh, that wonders me sometimes. The next question is, um, which have you found is better ROI-wise? ROI-wise. A VA cold caller from someone at the Philippines mm-hmm. or USA callers, someone in-house? Uh, USA, somebody in house. Uh, I mean, the reason being is because, like, you know, well, obviously you have the cultural differences, the time zone differences, but you know, we're talking to Americans. So if somebody doesn't have an American accent, um, it's going to really throw a wall up in between the seller and whoever they're on the other end of the phone with. People are getting blasted with telemarketing calls from the Philippines all day long. As soon as they hear that Filipino accent, or you know, they know that they're offshore. They're immediately hanging up on that call or tuning it out. And, you know, an American with an Americanized accent is going to be able to build rapport much quicker. They're going to get those leads that uh, somebody that's offshore can't. So say if, you know, a, a you know, offshore person has a thousand leads, um, they might get, you know, two, three, four, five. Well, your American might get double because they can build that instant credibility and instant rapport with the uh, person that's on the other end of the phone. Yeah, that's true. Man. I mean, I, I, we talk about that all the time. We have VAs, and we actually hired three more today. And every, every single one, when Manny onboards them, I'll, I'll sit down with them. We'll do a video call. What I'm really listening for is, am I going to catch that that little twang? You know, that that little foreign right. thing. And right. and, uh, and and the thing is that even if you don't hear it, it's still sometimes the way they talk. And Americans. They're quick, man. They're like, they want information quick, and they put up the wall. So we're real careful by hiring our VAs. Um, I kind of, you know, I think they do they do okay, but it's, it's never going to be at 100%, you know, like you said. Yeah, I agree. 
Okay, uh, one more of the questions that we have here is from Raphael. Uh, do you give your acquisitions gas money when they drive for dollars? Oh, absolutely and not. No, they're, my acquisitions is not leaving the office. They get there at 8.30, they take an hour lunch, and then we end at 5.30, but my guys are hustlers. Like, yeah, they'll stay till you know, 6.30, 7.30, call, you know, 7.30 to you know, get deals done. So, no, nobody's going out driving for dollars. Nobody's driving to houses, looking at houses, nothing like that. Yeah. And for those who are kind of tuning in uh, on the later end of the show, uh, Nick does more inbound and I would say outbound. Was that, can I say that with, within confidence? You do a lot of that PPC versus actually driving for dollars and banded signs and all that good stuff? Correct, yes. Yeah, so for those who are tuning in, uh, so that's Nick Perry doing his thing. Uh, another question is, what salary and commission would you pay a junior acquisition and senior acquisition? Uh, so for uh, seniors, it's like, you know, Two thousand dollars a month, and then like six to eight percent commission, and then for uh, junior acquisitions, it's an hourly role. So twelve, twelve to fifteen dollars an hour for junior acquisitions. You know they're strictly there, banging the phones, trying to get somebody to answer. Because what we've noticed is our guys spend sixty percent of their time. Our senior acquisitions were spending sixty percent of their time trying to get somebody on the phone. That doesn't make any sense. We're losing money by them just like dialing, trying to get people on the phone. So uh, get a junior who can sit there and sift through all those calls all day until they get somebody on the phone and then pass it to somebody qualified. We get a, another buzzer run. Can you, can you oh. give him the honors, please? Okay. That's badass, man. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, if you guys are watching, you guys He's telling you how to run a business, man. So Completely how to run a business, how to hire, how to pay. Uh, well, at least on what he does and what's how he's so successful doing that. So if he's doing it, I mean, it makes sense. Uh, let's give a few more minutes to do uh, a few more questions. Uh, before we get into that, let's do a little bit of announcements here. So the announcements again is this podcast is brought to you guys by Home Bottom Selling Association. Guys, if you guys aren't part of the Facebook group, please go out there and uh, request membership on how we share tips, tricks, and other stuff that we do on a daily basis on Home Bottom Selling Association. We do this podcast every Wednesday at 6.30. Uh, we just launched our website called TurnUpTheHustle.com. TurnUpTheHustle.com, you will find what systems, tools that we use, a little bit about those individuals and those companies, uh, discount codes for those systems and tools. Uh, we do daily training, Monday through Friday. Uh, go on to TurnUpTheHustle.com uh, and hit the education link. And we have daily value provided to you guys Monday through Friday. Make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Um, and before we get into the questions, Nick, do you want to share maybe your social media and how can people get a hold of you? Yeah, you can find me on Instagram at Nick Perry, REI. Um, you can get me on uh, Facebook too, but I got a couple different profiles. I use one just for disposition. So uh, that's the one with the hat. If you see the, the profile so picture with the hat, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's put that on that's there. the let's, correct one. Yeah, let's get, that, let's get um, that picture in there, man. So the picture you see now, that's the one. That's my actual Facebook profile. So you can find me there or just Instagram is the easiest way at Nick Perry, REI. That's a good looking photo, man. Thanks, man. Okay, uh, another question we have is how do you, or how and what do you use for skip tracing? Uh, so for skip tracing, we had a lot of success with batch skip tracing. Um, their hit rate and accuracy was, was really good. Um, you know, that, that worked good. And then when we were going volume, like, you know, doing like 100,000 records a month, we were just using Mojo. So Mojo's, their skip tracing 50% as accurate as like a, um, batch skip tracing mm -hmm. but when you're doing a hundred thousand you know records a month it's like let's just get as many phone numbers as we can and go masses of asses and that was working well uh but i would say if you want quality skip tracing i uh, use batch batch skip tracing that's batch who i i could vouch yeah. for batch is good uh right yeah batch and of course you have other groups like uh idi and uh skip fleet is the new one that's not out there now and all that good stuff so batch is good uh we use here at idi and we find that it works best for us um so IDI. Uh, another question here is, do you do your own dispo or do you hire to do a dispo? No, we have a, disp a dispositions department. Mm -hmm. So we have a, a senior acquisitions, or excuse me, senior uh, dispositions, a junior dispositions, and then we also have a transaction coordinator. How much do you pay them for dispo? Uh, dispositions is $2,000 a month and then 2% commission. What is the job description of a senior disposition? And a junior disposition. Get get properties assigned. So take them from unassigned and find a buyer for them and get them assigned as quickly as humanly possible. The difference. Oh, the difference. So, yeah. so when we get a property that comes in, there's 
a laundry list of things that need to be done. We need to get photos. We need to get the uh, photos up on a you know our, our buyer site. We've got to get our buyer list together. We've got to prep the you know system we use to blast out to our buyers. You know that whole checklist right there. It's time consuming. So uh, Junior Dispositions does that. Handles all the listings up on you know Facebook and you know, direct messaging people. And then uh, Senior Dispositions, they're just talking, taking buyer calls and talking to buyers all day long. And our phones ring like crazy on Dispo. So Junior Acquisitions will take rollover calls and things like that as well. Help manage the chats when they come in. But um, yeah, that's the main difference. So are they farming for buyers uh, or are you using a certain system to find buyers? Yeah, I mean, sometimes we will uh, farm for buyers, but we've had a lot of success just with real, like 75% of the deals we do, we run through realtors. Oh, wow, that's great. Yep. So we tell the realtors, hey, tack your fee on top. The These realtors are already, they know the people, so. Yeah, and I mean, we're nationwide, so if I get a deal in you know some weird town in Ohio, we're hitting up all the realtors there. And they've always got that one buyer who's like a doctor or a lawyer that does two deals a year that'll pay 85, 87 cents on the dollar. So um, we have a lot of a lot of success with that. So we just call on Zillow and find those realtors in that zip code? or Yeah, just go on Zillow, uh, hit Agent Finder, type in the zip code, it'll pull up everybody there and sort them by ranking. Zillow, so. that, that's a good tip on that for sure. We need a louder one, man. I think the batteries are dying. This ain't loud enough, man. I think the batteries are dying from all the value and knowledge that, that Nick is sharing with you guys. Zillow, guys. So Zillow, on a zip code, a realtor or agent can uh, sign up for what they call a zip code. Now, these zip codes, if they have a lot of value or if that agent wants to be number one on Zillow, so every time, for example, here, uh, 78238, if you go to Zillow.com and you put in 78238, whoever paid the most, you're going to see them more periodically. Because you see them more periodically, or more frequently, they should know that market. So when you're calling these houses, hey, I have a house on this street, they should know who that is. They should already have buyers. So that's a for sure golden nugget for you guys for watching. Let me hit it again. Yeah. yeah. Can I get one? Huh? Can I get one for adding uh, on to his? There's spikes right here. <laughs> <laughs> here's Nick. Uh, what else we got here? A few more questions. Uh, so since you do hire seasoned salespeople, do you train on scripts? Or are they encouraged to take the info and create their own immediately? No, absolutely not. They're coming into our system, so they're going to be using our script. So we put them through, um, it's about a three-day training process. So the first, half, the first half of the first day, it's pretty much all video. You know, we use uh, sales training from Rafael Vargas, uh, we, and you know, we take a lot of uh, videos from Sean Terry. Uh, we've got like a, you know, basically cherry pick the best videos that are applicable mm -hmm. to acquisitions. They've got to go through all those, and they're tested on them too. So you say, hey, we need you to take notes because there will be a test on Are these videos. Them? Yeah, I, I really don't test them, but well, I, I pop them. quiz them. Right, right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't have like a formal test. I should. should. But should. I may make one when I get time, but I just well, don't have time for all that. Uh, if you make one, yeah. you share it with us? Yeah, yeah. Um, so they have to go through that. And then uh, Brandon brings them in, onboards them with, you know, shows them Podio, shows them Call Rail, how to navigate around. And then they're shadowing, you know, mm -hmm. the rest of the day with our senior acquisitions. And they've got a script they've got to follow. Um, they have to memorize the scripts. They have to memorize all the objections. Day two, they're just sitting there as they're shadowing, like reading over and over and over the script and all the different objections. And then day two, they'll probably shadow a little bit in the morning in the mornings. Then it's time to actually start taking some calls. So they'll get some trash leads. They'll start calling the trash leads. You know, make any mistakes that they need to. We'll uh, you know give them constructive criticism. And then by day three, it's it's sink or swim. Sink or swim, man. Sink or swim. Do you, uh, Only the strong with, survive. You mess with other websites like TTP or John Martinez, Rick uh, Daniels. No, they've got really great curriculum. Um, you know, they've we've used some of their stuff, but the videos that I give our guys, I try to not give them like too much information. I just want I just want them to have the basics Basically. of how to you know do uh, single family acquisitions, not get too deep into the weeds with it. Okay. Uh, the question that Hernando had earlier, and I guess we're kind of uh, wrapping up here. We've been live for 50 minutes or so. Uh, the question Hernando had, and shout out to Hilco and Hilco team, their uh, group here in San Antonio. He had, I guess in general, in basic, if, if you can answer this, what's the hiring process? Yeah, so we got a pretty simple hiring process. Um, the thing about hiring is, like, you just have to have enough qualified candidates. It's just like our business, right? Mm -hmm. Like, just get enough leads coming in. Yeah. And then the more leads you have, yeah, you know, the more deals you're going to make. Right? It's the same thing. 
So we've got a, you know, kind of a, it's not really a proprietary way, but uh, Brandon and myself, we worked at Indeed.com for you know, two and a half years before doing real estate full time. So we use it Indeed. We know how to kind of use Indeed to get a lot of candidates coming in, which is great. So I can break that down if you'd like here in just a yeah. minute. But the way that essentially goes is we get a ton of candidates coming in from Indeed. And then it's like, you know, great, we have all these candidates, but nobody wants to sit there and actually look at these resumes, then like phone call the person and phone screen them. Mm -hmm. and it's just a, a huge nightmare to even think about that. If any of you guys have done hiring before and you look at your, you know, your profile, you don't want to call these people. Like yeah. you'd probably rather like mop the floors. So we hire somebody that is dedicated to actually screening these uh, resumes when they come in. Mm -hmm. It's really a $10 an hour position and it's top of funnel. So you need to outsource that. If there's anything that you take from this entire presentation is get somebody that can work a couple hours a day that has some common sense that'll work from home that can go ahead and pick up the phone and call these candidates and find out if they're worth a shit and if they are then pass them in for an interview so that's basically how what there happens. it is man yeah. don't spend your time doing things you can get other people to do yeah. you got that frank one <laughs> yeah. Uh, someone submits an application or something. That it goes to Indeed, or are you just using? You're doing your own thing for applications. No. So all of our resumes will come into Indeed. So like our recruiter, like Brandon, his mom's got a little bit of extra time. You know, she's she likes to help out. So she actually works from home. She'll pick up the. She'll log into our Indeed dashboard. She manages all the postings. Make sure the postings are you know up. We've got enough uh, job. Uh, job post out, etc. She'll get in, look through all the apps, call the people that need to be called, get them on the phone. Um, she just tries to catch them for an impromptu phone screen. So you're not trying to schedule a time with these people. You know, they're out there looking for a job. Mm -hmm. So, hey, you got your resume on Indeed for the home buying specialist. Do you have, you have a minute? And then they'll kind of go through some basic questions with them just to really gauge like, you know, if their culture fit with us, do they, do they meet our core values? Uh, give them a basic understanding of what the role is. Tell them, you know, all the red tape up front. Like, hey, this is Monday through Saturday. These are the office hours. This is the office location. You know, make sure that that's going to work with them. Because you want to tell them that up front before they come into your office and waste your time and say, well, I can't work Saturday. Or I didn't know the office was in South Austin. I live all the way up in North Austin. Yeah. So. Um, that's a good point. Yep. Yeah. So once she finds a good fit, she'll actually go into our Google Calendar. Uh, create a calendar invite for us, attach the resume into the calendar invite, and then put a quick synopsis, two sentences, um, why she thought the candidate was a good fit. So we don't need a novel. Why did you pass this candidate over? And then we've got to, you know, we'll just start seeing calendar invites popping up just all over our calendar. And that's, Thoughts on um, that's really the good. applicant sending in some type of two-minute video? Uh, no, forget the two-minute video. Then qualified candidates aren't going to do that. They're not going to waste their time sitting there doing videos. Just, just get these people on the phones. Like, I know everybody in this industry touts like, I get them to go through this like crazy funnel and try to get them to do a two minute video. Like, qualified candidates are are in demand, and you can't be putting them through, you know, a bunch of hoops. In my opinion, that deserves another <laughs> waste people's time. So let's go to um, maybe if you want to drop a value. So someone who's watching. Uh, who's a Lone Ranger, is what I like to call them. You know, they just do their own deals, they do their own dispo, their own acquisitions. Wants to take, you know, they close four or five contracts a month, and they want to take things to the next level, from a one-person show to maybe a, a three to four. What value advice you have for those individuals? Yeah, I mean, stay doing what you're doing. Don't try to, you know, eliminate yourself from your role completely. Like, remember what got you to, you know, four or five contracts, right? It's Sending out marketing, getting on the phone, talking to people like Brent Daniel says, and getting deals sold. So do not stop doing that. What I would I would advise first is hire another acquisitions to get on and bang the phones with you, right? Mm -hmm. Then you're gonna be able to make double the amount of contact mm -hmm. to motivated sellers, get, you get more contracts. Then you can start focusing more on dispositions. But you never want to take your, you, you never want to jump out too soon. Never fire yourself too quickly because uh, that doesn't work. So I would advise getting, um, you know, getting somebody in next to you and working, you know, be a leader and lead from the front and, and show them how it's done rather than tell them how to do something. That's good. 
Same question, but now that one Lone Ranger has himself and maybe two, three guys, and he wants to take it to ten. What advice and value to those guys? I mean, it's the same thing. You know, if you're, um, you know, if you're, if you're a CEO, and you've got you know, multiple people now. You're gonna be managing KPIs. You're gonna be doing, um, you know, payroll. You're gonna be doing a lot of different different roles to keep the company moving in the right direction. But um, you know, hiring never stops, right? So you're gonna to have to really put yourself in a position to see what's where's the uh, the break in your in your company. Right. You know, are we weak on dispositions right now? All right, we need to get another you know junior dispositions or another senior dispositions or another transaction coordinator in. Get that person in. But while while shit is weak in that department roll up your sleeves and do the work like i was on dispo all last month because we were drowning in deals we yeah. couldn't get them done fast enough so i'm sitting there right alongside my guys in the trenches doing what i got to do to make sure that we get ahead then the new uh, junior comes on and he's shadowing under me so i'm not taking my other disposition guys time for him to train so i think that's uh that's a key key that's thing right there friend, i mean what can we say? Value upon value upon value for all you guys who are watching. Uh, another question. This question comes from a good buddy of ours, uh, Ricardo Rosales out of Houston. So, Ricardo. What's up, Ricardo? So Ricardo and his team. Yeah. Are you doing any SEO in combination with PPC? I was, like, until I got hit with, like, a Panda algorithm update in, like, 2017. I was, like, page one for, like, 50 or 60 you know, good keywords in, in a lot of different markets. And then... Uh, we got to, you know, I put so much time, energy, and money into creating backlinks, doing all the SEO, you know, stuff. And it was working, but then I got hit, you know, with the uh, update and I was on like page 60, you know, overnight. Mm -hmm. So it was like three years of work, had a, uh, an algorithm update, and then, you know, hundreds of hours down the drain. So you don't do it anymore? That's, yeah, that's pay to play. I'm going to pay to play. Pay to play, man. Yeah. Pay to play, okay. I wanted to go back. I had a question um, I thought I read it earlier. Transaction coordinator. What was the pay looking like there? Uh, the transaction coordinator, they're on um, they're on a, an hourly plus a bonus. So I need them to be incentivized to get these deals across the finish line quickly. So it's not all just like an hourly job. I know a lot of people pay like, yeah, it's like a, we have an admin or transaction coordinator that you pay hourly. But I would encourage you to get these people on some sort of small bonus structure. Like ours is paid $125 per transaction. She just got a raise, you know, she, she got moved up. She's making $125 per transaction and she gets her hourly pay. So her the lion's share of her um, her money comes from bonuses. Mm. So she's engaged in you know, reaching out to these title companies, getting these sellers to get in and get their docs turned in, getting these buyers to come in and actually making these deals happen. You said when you do a, a deal, for example, in another state, you work a lot with the realtors. Are you double closing or you're assigning with the realtor in place? No, assign it with the realtor in place. So, you know, we get on the phone with the realtor. Hey, you know, um, we've got this property. Um, tack your fee on top. So what we need you to do is go ahead and add your fee to this price. Obviously, your your client is, you know, going to gonna pay the fee and you're going to probably get to list it on the back end once they get this thing fixed up and want to put it on the market. So you get paid a little bit right now, and you're going to get paid on the back end as well. It's a sweet deal for the realtors. Any pushback from the realtors? This is illegal. Can't do that. Oh, you I get that shit all the time. But we tell them, hey, we've got the property under contract with a memorandum of option with the ability to assign equitable interest and the ability to market the property. And then they're like, oh, what? And then they're like, okay, well, you know. And the good realtors will get with it. You're going to get these old school realtors yeah. to give you a bunch of pushback and just don't worry about them. Yeah, On to the next. you got to go for the new ones, right? But it's not the the new ones. Um, it's it's just the more savvy ones. You get some yeah. of these realtors that like, new ones that just come out of school and they they think they want to be the police. Like <laughs> <laughs> the savvy ones. That's the key thing. Yeah. The realtor police. Real yeah. estate law. Like you can't do this. And then I know you know. The law. And I tell my guys like my guys will battle them and like put them in their place. But I'm like, dude, don't even waste your time with these people. Just on to the next. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We've had a few battles with real estate agents. But no, they they're a necessary evil. So let's just put it that way. All right, there's some real estate, uh, 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 you know, real estate guys out there that are absolute homies. Like I'm calling like Tim Macy, who we just met here in San Antonio today. Like 
homie. Like he gets it. He understands the investment side of things. He understands, you know, the the opportunity for him. Yeah. And there's tons of realtors that get it. There's just still a small portion out there that don't, and they're just stuck in their ways, and they're not going to change. Don't worry about it. Yeah, he has a good reputation here in San Antonio. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. a beast. He's cool guy. What else, Charles? Man, I want to invite your partner up here, man. Yeah, get Brandon on here, man. Come, come on, on, come on. Man. Well, Brandon's the one that actually makes all this shit happen. I, I, I'm just a cheerleader at this point. So oh, right he's on. the one that is responsible for the initial like interviews and hiring and training and onboarding. So, so with that being said, introduce yourself. Yeah, brother. with that said, Brandon, share a little bit about you and how you guys are are partnering up and what's the main role you do uh, with Nick. Yeah, so I um, I joined Nick about three years ago. I was working at Indeed as well, right out of college. I knew in college that it wasn't going to be for me. So similar to Nick, it was always, I got to be my own boss. I can't do this. You know, I was getting in trouble at Indeed as well within the first few months. So he um, he had an opportunity where he was growing, asked me if I wanted to join. I was already reading about wholesaling, real estate. Um, he was helping me through my first deal while I was at Indeed. So um, five, five months in, um, cashed out my bonus, quit. Just didn't go in the next day join Nick and been with him for the last three years so I started banging the phones as so we started with him cold calling yep. cold yeah yeah like cold calling like probate attorneys like the worst of the worst stuff you get there yeah. cold calling um, attorneys house mm -hmm. owners everybody just all kinds of stuff just thrown on a dialer is just non-stop coming in I had phone calls coming in all evening um, and then we had, I think, five people then. We went down to um, him, me, and we've built up since then. So now I'm still running the acquisition side, still overseeing a lot of the dispositions, um, all of our CRM, setting up all new tools, phones, um, Simon calls, anything that we need. To any big, pro yeah, any big projects in the bi business, any like, you know, initiatives Brandon takes on. So he's, you know, he's in the role of like COO, like the person that actually gets shit done. So. Yeah, I mean, I get a lot of credit, but this is the one that actually makes. There it is, brother. Shit, I also makes things happen. There's one in every office. Yep. It? So people coming in late, all the little things, right? All the onboarding, people coming in late, people not doing the work, people letting leads sit, like all of that. Somebody has to be on top of all that, like clockwork, because if not, then it's just not gonna run that well. So you look at the top guys in the country that have you know wholesaling businesses, right? And that's where we're where we're at, and where we're going is it's all about efficiency and how you run the business. So that's everything we do. We're tweaking every day just to get better and better and better because we can make more money with what we have. So let me ask you a question. You know, of course, we deal with this too. Um, so after you have, you know, let's just say you've had, you know, I think you said you have nine right now, but I'm sure some of them have been with you for a while. Mm -hmm. And you build relationships in such close quarters, you know. So... Is there ever a time where, where I mean, do you keep those relationships at a distance, or do those uh, during this process of you guys being together for a time, have those relationships kind of grown together? And when you have to drop the hammer about something, is it difficult for you guys? I mean, it's always like losing a family member, right? But like, what's what's the alternative, right? It's like if if I don't fire, like say if I had you know somebody that's been with me for a long time and. You know they're they're loyal. They they do all the right things, but I have to fire them. I have to fire them because if I don't, I'm doing a disservice to my uh, to Brandon. I'm doing a disservice to everybody in my company, and I'm doing a disservice to my family. So, am I going to choose this person over the rest of my company and my family? Absolutely not. The decision's easy. Cut them. You also want somebody that's going to understand. If you got to take it to them and tell them, you know what's going on, what you're seeing, you should have a player that understands you're right. I should correct it because they want to be somebody great. That's how I feel. So we had Nick share, Brandon, uh, for someone that wholesaler who's trying to get to the next level. How about a piece of advice or words of wisdom for the wholesaler who's watching, uh, who's watched the YouTube videos, who's watched you know podcasts and whatever the case may be, and is ready to do, to do the first deal? What advice or what uh, value you want to provide to those guys? So if you haven't done your first deal, um, I would stop just watching so much, take action. Just get a contract. Make an offer. Get the seller to sign the paperwork. We got a simple contract. So if anybody wants a contract, I can send it to them. Simple two-pager. Just get the seller to sign the contract. Once you have that, figure out the rest. Start reaching out to people. 
Start reaching out Facebook groups. You can handle everything after you have a contract. Okay? Yep, and you get the get the phones to ring. Nothing happens until the phone rings. So spend the money and get the phone to ring. First thing. All right, let's uh, answer a few more questions. Another question we have here is how much capital you need before you need you know you're ready to hire a team. How much did you have when you started hiring your team? Um, you know, I've had I, I'm always pretty conservative. I try to keep I have you know good reserves on deck for expansion and for growth and and for just you know any catastrophes on hand. So I've got a lot of working capital, um, but you know what you in the beginning like. Man, I was always going out on. I was, I was on a prayer, right? Like you, you got to, you got to have faith, right? You got to have. You got to be willing to roll the dice, man. I mean, bet on yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, like Mike and I, sometimes you know. But many times we're just like, hey, man, we got to go, mm-hmm. you know. And you just got to go and believe that you're gonna make it happen. You know, whatever needs to happen, you got to believe that you're gonna make it happen because. If you don't believe you're going to make it happen, you're in the wrong business. Right? Yeah, I think one of the key words for that is just trust the process. Right. Uh, another question here is how long is your non-compete, and do you have them sign a non-disclosure? Yeah, so we do a non-disclosure and a non-compete, so it's for two years. If anybody tries to do a deal in real estate um, within those two years, we'll sue them for $20,000 per deal. Blair right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Made more money off that. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool, man. All right, there you go. Uh, so let's do some announcements, and uh, we'll show one more time with uh, uh, Nick. Uh, but again, join Home Bottom Selling Association, guys. I, I read the comments that is uh, someone appreciates all the value we're dropping, not holding back. Uh, Nick is generous to share all the value as well. Join the Home Bottom Selling Association for more value on Facebook. Uh, the podcast is every Wednesday at six thirty. Uh, visit TurnUpTheHustle.com to find out systems, education, uh, what the events we got going on here. Uh, at Home Model Center Solutions, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, guys, please. We definitely want to share more value with everyone else who else is watching. Um, a couple events that we have on your screen, you do see a special guest, Ground Zero, I think February nice. 28th and 29th. Uh, Q Quinton Flores, who runs Ground Zero, is having a big event. Key players like Max Maxwell, uh, the All-In Entrepreneurs, Brent Daniels. Uh, of course, Charles and I will be special guests. Talking about that on there. So if you guys haven't bought your tickets, you can use promo code HBHS for 15% off. We would love to hang out with anyone who's watching. Uh, come hang out with myself um, and everyone else is going to be at that event. It's going to be uh, a great event in my opinion. Uh, Nick, any final words? Dude, thank you guys so much for having me on. I mean, um, if you guys need anything, reach out at Nick Perry REI. Happy to help. At Nick Perry REI, I have, happy to help. Anything else, uh, Charles, before and we... Honored. Man, they have you here, man. Absolutely, really, yeah. Man. Thank you, man. Again, guys, so if you guys had value, everyone on YouTube, uh, everyone on Facebook, feel free to reach out at Nick Perry. Uh, he is tagged on this post. So if you guys want to send him a friend request or our DM, again, Home Blind Home Center Associations. Right now, we're watching the, the podcast on Home Blind Home Center Solutions, which is the page where make sure you join the group, and the group is called Home Blind Home Center Association. Uh, visit TrumpTheHustle.com. And I guess with that being said, man, again, honored to have you here. What a great podcast for the first one of the year. And I think for a lot of people who are watching who want to start here and actually grow a team, this was such a such a right time to do this podcast with Perry. And it's nothing but straight value. Uh, a lot of great comments, a lot of good feedback, Nick, for all, all the stuff you do. Uh, so, again, thanks on that. So, with that being said, last year we had a, a, our podcast. We always end the podcast with Every Dollar Counts. Every Dollar Counts. Every Dollar Counts. I think for this year, since we're starting off 2020, on your, on your screen, top right, uh, Nick, we have a thing called Turn Up the Hustle, man. What that does for you who are watching, we want to, something that does here in our office, if someone's kind of slacking, someone's not motivated enough, or someone just needs a reminder, Turn Up the Hustle here in our office really helps out. So, you know, we just want to share the wealth with you guys. You guys are slacking or, you know, your partner or investor or a buddy, and they're slacking. Remember, just, hey, Turn Up the Hustle, and let's get that pushed out to you guys so you guys know to Turn Up the Hustle, right? Turn it up. So I think for this one, and from now on, we will end with Trump the Hustle all simultaneously. And I think we've, I think it will be cool. So that's that's why I like to roll. So with that being said, guys, before we do that, uh, catch us the next Wednesday podcast, 630, uh, here at Home Bottom Center Solutions. We want to make sure that you guys turn, turn the, the hustle. hustle.